So in this video, I am going to show you how I transform this scene into this using just my speed light. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography or maybe just photography in general, then this channel may be for you. So you might want to subscribe and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload new videos. And if you want to see more of my images, you could always follow me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. So in this video, it's going to be a bit different. Instead of me being able to demo everything for you guys live, this one, unfortunately, I wasn't able to do so because it was a commissioned work and I really didn't have time to do a behind the scenes video. But I did the next best thing by asking my assistant photographer to take some BTS photos and this is the one that I will be showing you today so that I can explain my entire thought process on why I lit it that way, why I shot it, and basically the entire concept of the shoot. Okay, so here goes. So this is the scene without light, without anything. This is properly exposed. And this is the area that we wanted to pinpoint for this particular shoot. Yes, you can see the style is set up like a small picnic here. This truck was meant to represent their vehicle going to that place. So it, it had that really very old vibe, right? And one of the things that was very important for me with this particular shoot was that I wanted to make the light look as natural as possible or what you call practical lighting. In other words, every single light that I will put in this scene will actually have a purpose. Now, I shot this, I think, with a Sony A7R Mark II with a 16 to 35 lens and a bunch of lights, which I will be showing you later on in this video. Now, another thing that we have to note is that I shot this during the time of what we call blue hour when it's actually right after the sun sets and before nighttime sets in, we've got beautiful blue skies. Now here in the Philippines, unfortunately, we only have blue hour for about 15 minutes. So we really had to rush. So everything that I was doing was in preparation for that one. And I just adjusted my exposure and my flash exposure on the fly the moment that we got the nice, the nice blue skies, okay? So this is what I did first. I actually underexposed the scene in camera using my shutter speed, my ISO, and my, and my aperture to be able to get more detail in the sky. So here, and now by doing that, we are actually underexposing the entire scene here now. Then I wanted to have my subjects here in the picnic area that the stylist had set up. But as I said earlier, I want my light to look as natural as possible. So how am I supposed to do that if I just point a light, let's say coming from this direction, it's gonna be so obvious that I just put a flash there. So I saw in the, in the, in the kit of the stylist that he had this lamp and I asked him to put it there and that one actually served as my main light. So how did I illuminate this one? Very simple. All I needed to do was really put in a flash unit like this one and I gelled my flash unit CTO orange. Now the reason why I did that is because I want to make the blues even bluer. So by gelling my light, a CTO orange, I'm able to now put my white balance into tungsten, which adds more blue to the actual image, therefore making everything else that's not hit by this particular light or any light that's gelled CTO orange bluer. And that's why you see really, really blue skies also. Okay, so with this one, I was able to put the light here and that actually sit, served as my main light already here for the subjects, which I will be tweaking later on. Now, I also wanted to give a bit of depth here in terms of the truck. So that's why I had another light here, but this time it wasn't the flash unit, but rather just a continuous light. But the nice thing about that continuous light was that I could change the color temperature to match that of my flash. In other words, it was a bicolor light. So I also set that at about 3200 Kelvin, and that's the one that's illuminating the inner part of the truck just to give that depth in terms of, of the image itself. Now, from there, I try to balance now the light coming from the lamp and that from the truck. And as you notice, the sky is already getting bluer also because I already set my white balance for tungsten. In other words, it's making everything a bit more blue, but it lacks something for me. And what lacked was basically light here in this area. So I decided to 
mimic that of a headlight. So let's say they were having a picnic and the car was running and the headlight was on as their main source of illumination. So this is what I did. I actually asked my assistant here to hold another flash unit. As you can see, here's the light that's illuminating the inner part of the truck. And my assistant is here holding on to another flash unit that is also gelled CTO orange. So when you take that shot, that's how that light is illuminating this area here. Again, giving more depth. And at the same time, it is actually practical. In other words, there is a reason on why the light is there. Okay. So from there, I ju we just started posing the subject and basically tweaking because of course the light, the, the ambient light, the existing ambient light was getting weaker because we were getting into um, night already. In other words, we were hitting the blue sky. So I just had to adjust my shutter speed and my ISO and my aperture for that existing ambient light. And then afterwards, I adjusted the power of my flash units to match that existing ambient light. And this is actually how the scene looked like without any light boosted up ISO, this is how flat the light was. This is the actual scene while I was shooting. The last thing here that I would actually want to impart with you guys is all about perspective and camera angle. If you notice in the very, very first image, let me go back to that. The very, very first image, you could see that there's so much distortion when it comes to the truck, to everything that's just very distorted because I was using a 16 to 35 lens. But by actually shooting above them higher, I was able to actually hide the distortion. In other words, I put them in an area where they won't be distorted and the truck won't be distorted also. So to, to make it look a bit more natural, but I still wanted to shoot it ultra wide because I wanted to get the nice streaks in the cloud. Okay. So here I am shooting with the Sony a7R Mark II, as I stated earlier with the 16 to 35 f4 lens. The light was here that's illuminating them. We have one light here that's illuminating inside the truck and we have another light here that's mimicking a headlight of the truck, okay? And this is the actual output of the image. Again, this is all properly balanced. The existing ambient light was set using my aperture, my ISO and my shutter speed. The moment I set that, I started adjusting the flash power and the power of this LED light to match that of my existing ambient light. So again, the light was here, the light was here, and the light was here, okay? So if you have any questions with regards to this video, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. And while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload new videos like this. And if you want to see more of my images, you can always follow me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.